Hi. In this video demonstration, we're going to talk about a type of lighting and a type of shader that helps us achieve uh, this lighting effect called ambient occlusion. Uh, what ambient occlusion is, is all of those places, the nooks and crannies, uh, behind objects, underneath objects, etc., that light just cannot get to. Uh, it's the shadows generated by an ambient light source. Uh, early on, earlier on in another video demonstration, I told you that uh, direct light sources are the reasons we get these uh, actual cutout shadows of different shapes and specific shapes. Well, ambient occlusion is all the shadows that appear uh, in between and underneath and behind objects, uh, not necessarily direct cast of a shadow from that object, but just where light just cannot actually make it into or, or reach in a specific location. Uh, so what I've got going here is a simple scene uh, on a plane uh, and this teapot here. I've, I've given us a just a, a diffuse standard texture. I've just changed the diffuse color to white. That's it. There's been no other uh, changes whatsoever. And then on this sphere over here on the side here, I've given myself uh, you know more of a complete texture job with uh, diffuse color, specular level, normals and bump map, and even a displacement map down here to give us kind of a uh, rock wall kind of feeling and texture here. If I go ahead and do render, and I'm going to tell you that I have uh, Mental Ray Renderer installed. This will not work outside of Mental Ray. Uh, and as well, I have absolutely no lights in the scene. And I've actually even turned Final Gather off. If I go to my render setup here and go to the direct uh, global illumination here, uh, you'll notice that I've gone ahead and turned Final Gather completely off. So we've got no advanced lighting, uh, nothing going on in this scene at all. No lights, in fact, at all. Uh, and here's our final render. You see that we've got uh, the displacement on this one kind of gives us that uh, extreme rocky uh, with lots of nooks and crannies and crevices. And then we've got our teapot and our plane just kind of sitting out here in nowhere. Uh, and with the default lighting, we've got no shadows, so everything looks like it's kind of hovering there and, and, and nothing looks real great. Uh, now without final gather, without all those great lighting settings that, uh, that we've uh, done in the past here, uh, I'm going to go back to my first shader here, the one where all I did was change the diffuse color to white here. And we're going to add a specific shader that's going to give us a different effect here. Inside the diffuse channel here, uh, I'll go ahead and open it up and under your mental ray shaders, uh, if you don't have mental ray installed as your renderer, you should do that first. Uh, under your mental ray shaders here, you've got uh, ambient reflective occlusion. Uh, it's a specific type of shader for mental ray. Go ahead and double click that to assign it to that diffuse channel slot there. Uh, and we're just going to go ahead and immediately render here to see a difference. What you should see is that everything kind of softened up, at least everything other than our brick wall, rock wall sphere here. Uh, we've got uh, a very speckled looking shadows here, even though we've got no light sources in the scene whatsoever. Uh, and what this is doing is taking just the default lighting setup and saying, okay, where would a shadow appear uh, on or in or underneath or in the nooks and crannies of these objects, uh, whether there's a direct light source on it or not. It gives us a very more, uh, more realistic feel. Uh, it softens up our light and, and makes things seem a little bit more solid. Uh, this speckling, we'll go ahead and talk about uh, how to get rid of some of these things uh, as we go through the settings here for our ambient occlusion. Uh, but that's what it's done for us so far here. Inside our ambient occlusion, uh, if I go ahead and hit the go to parent button, we'll take right back out to the front there and you can see that map now is in your diffuse color slot. Uh, it works off of a few settings here. The first one is our samples. Increasing this will increase the clarity or the smoothness uh, the overall quality, in fact, of the ambient occlusion shadows. It defaults us with 16, which is great for kind of a, a quick render test, uh, but we can we can bump that up quite a ways. Something like 128 would give us a lot better, uh, smoother effect. Uh, if I go ahead and immediately render again, you can notice how fast this is actually rendering and giving us kind of that uh, uh, lighting effect without having to do all that extra lighting setup. Uh, and now our speckles are all gone. We've got more of a, a smoother uh, interpolated shadow here, which is a lot nicer. We might even be able to go a little further since we've got just a bright white texture on this thing. Uh, but in all of these little areas where light just probably won't get, uh, you're going to see some shadows uh, that just happen, kind of occur naturally. Uh, 
uh, and now they'll occur in our 3D world as well. Yeah, the next two settings are two color swatches. We've got a bright color and a dark color. They both have channel buttons, uh, which means that you can add a map in here, say the rock wall here as your diffuse slot for the bright. And then the dark would be whatever you want to use as your shadows. Uh, you can adjust these if you think that one is a little bit, uh, you know, if the shadows are a little bit too dark, you can always put down in the gray, do a render test, and see if that kind of uh, gives you a more subtle effect than that jet black. Or change it to purples and blues or something like that that a shadow might be made up of thanks to uh, cold light or outdoor light or something like that. We've got the spread value underneath those. Uh, the higher this goes, the larger the effect is. Uh, and it just kind of ends up smoothing everywhere from where it starts all the way out. And it kind of messes things up quite a bit. Uh, I'll very rarely change this. 0.75, if at all, I might change it to a little bit lower uh, at 0.5 or so just to get uh, some of these shadows tightening up a little bit but rarely do I want them to spread too far out. See 0.5 gives us even more shadow uh, directly under our teapot and under our sphere etc. So if you want more shadow you can try reducing it but I would never really go above 1.0 uh, without risking some severe quality issues there. Our max distance right now is set to 0.0, .0 which means it's going to extend on as far as it can forever. Uh, if we give this an actual value, uh, say 10 in here, we can go ahead and do a render on that real quick and see what's going on. Uh, our shadows tighten up to a much more subtle effect because we're only giving it 10 units uh, before that shadow needs to die off. So wherever it starts, it spreads out for those 10 generic units at this point uh, and then dies off. So with that low number in there, I've got almost no shadow over my hovering sphere here and just a little bit of a hint of that line of shadow underneath my teapot. Uh, raising this to a hundred, uh, we can see the difference and those shadows should uh, get a little bit darker, grow out a little bit farther uh, and then we see that uh, that kind of soft fall off fading and now we've got our, our subtle shadow back underneath our sphere as well. Uh, so you can have a little bit more control over this using the max distance uh, here as well. If you want it to go forever, just leave it set to 0.0. .0. We can mark this uh, specific texture to become reflective. Uh, if we do a render here, some of those shadows and everything get uh, like reflected light bounced around the scene with it. Uh, I'll usually have this turned off. Uh, we've got a drop down which we won't talk uh, we won't talk about too much in there because occlusions which you're probably going to be using this for uh, for now anyway. Uh, and then we've got uh, we can just leave it at that. The, the settings that you should probably be worried about right now would be your samples, your two color swatches, your spread and maybe your max distance uh, tops. Now if we've got a texture that's already kind of built, uh, like my stone wall texture here over on the sphere, uh, we can do the same idea. Uh, if we come down and take a look at this texture here, you'll see that all I've done is, is uh, loaded up a bunch of uh, just JPEG images that happen to look like uh, stones for our diffuse map. Uh, we've got specular, uh, you know, all of those maps that we talked about during like week two or three here. Uh, all the way down. Normals maps and I've even included displacement map to actually uh, change the actual surface of our sphere so that it looks a little bit more like stones put together to form a wall. Uh, this is a you know how up till now we've been building our textures just fine uh, but if we want to include that ambient occlusion shader uh, in there with this uh, we can do the same thing. What we can do is we can actually right click on our diffuse and I'm gonna go with cut and then we'll assign that ambient reflective occlusion texture in there. And this time in the bright swatch, everywhere that uh, was normally white and then leave our shadows alone, we'll paste that image of those rocks in there. Uh, your sphere is going to look a little odd, but trust me, in the final render, it'll work out uh, a little bit nicer. Uh, and if I do uh, about 128 there again, uh, and we can do our final render here, and we should see 
that everywhere we've got these kind of rocks and, and crags and, and underneath this thing uh, we should get a little bit softer uh, and a little bit darker shadow uh, under here that helps it feel a little bit more realistic. A little bit less bright and shiny uh, and overall uh, a little bit easier on the eyes. We can also, uh, let's say that we had built our rocks out of something other uh, than that if I go right click and I paste that back in there, something other than just a, an image that maybe we have created in Photoshop or the like uh, we can also include this ambient occlusion uh, even if we've done procedural textures. Let's say if I dig in here we can keep going and we've got uh, several different mix maps and stuff like that that are putting this texture together. Uh, the other way of accomplishing this is uh, I can right click, cut that out as well, uh, and in here we can add a mix map uh, and that's going to be up under our standard shaders. There's our mix map. We'll go ahead and load that in. Uh, and then I'm going to change both color swatches to black because one of them is going to be for our shadows. The other is going to be for our bricks. Uh, I've got those bricks on the clipboard right now. So in color 2 here, I'm going to go ahead and paste that copy uh, of that ground16.jpg. And then in the mix map amount, uh, we're going to go ahead and load in that ambient reflective occlusion. And maybe bump the samples up for a cleaner result there. Uh, if you see it, show up in your sample slot, you've done it right. If it shows up looking something backwards, like we've got way too much shadow and not enough uh, rock, uh, that just means that you need to go ahead and hit this swap button and make sure that it's, uh, it's in the correct color swatch for that to really truly function uh, properly. And then do another final render here. Since these go quick without any final gather or anything, we can go ahead and wait for it. Uh, should also show that ambient occlusion being uh, being bled through here as well with our stones. Uh, it's almost a similar effect. So even if you've got uh, layers upon layers upon layers of procedural texturing, uh, you can still mix in that ambient occlusion texture. Uh, doing this for everything in a scene, however, can get uh, fairly tedious depending on what you're going to be using this scene for. Uh, if you're going to be using it uh, in animation, you're either going to want to find a render that does ambient occlusion automatically with its texture set, uh, which the standard textures do not, or you're going to need to mix in these uh, mental ray ambient occlusion shaders uh, with all of your textures if you want to get that kind of soft, realistic uh, ambient shadowing effect. Uh, next, uh, we'll show you uh, a way of doing this post, which means if you're doing a single image, uh, we can we can do what's called an ambient occlusion pass, and. Uh, we can show you how to put those together to make it look as though all the textures had ambient occlusion, even if they didn't. All right?